Siffy Haven, a Juilliard graduate. Well, that's not really her name. However, she made a choice to be an escort instead of being homeless. Now, we've spoken to her a few times on the show and you will see that her shows were always anonymous. But now she's come out and the truth is ha for her freedom. This is her story. And it's a good one. So sit back, relax, grab your coffee or your running shoes, as I always say, and enjoy the story. And tell us how you feel. Do you feel judgment? Tell us how you feel about the story. Thank you, and we'll see you on the other side. Hello, Seth. How are you today? Well, hi, Karina. I'm good. Pretty good. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Um, and I'd like to say that you're looking really good. And the most exciting part is that you're showing your face now compared to the other, the other times <laughs> we spoke on the show. But you have a reason for that, right? Um, I do, yeah. <laughs> I know that um, your your books are really really like off the charts that become so um, popular but you've you've done something even more than that and we were talking a bit about it on the other shows tell us a bit about your um, one woman show that is exciting oh, oh that that little ditty <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, about um, about a hundred thousand years ago, I started writing a solo show. Oh, okay. And <laughs> it took many incarnations. But once it was a three-hour show called Men, which and there was no men. In it. But um, <laughs> so finally, years and years and years later, um, I finished the, writing the show, and it turned out I just needed the ending. And once I found the ending, I ended up finishing the show. But I had some really great help along the way. I had a couple of teachers that were amazing, Matt Hoverman and um, Paul Stein and all sorts of my writing group and my Aubin Philibon and all sorts of wonderful people. Anyway, they helped me kind of put it together. And when I finally had the show, um, I ran into an old acting teacher of mine. Not, he's not old, we're not old, but it was a long ago time. And um, he, I saw him and I said, would you like to direct my show? And he said, yes. So then I said, okay, the director and a producer and something. Anyways, long story short, how do poor people do art? They don't. Um, so <laughs> so if you have a, a bank account, yay. And if otherwise you bank all it yourself for a very long time. And so I, we had to raise a lot of money to get to do the show. So we raised, we did the Kickstarter, we raised the money. And we put it up in Chicago last year, almost exactly at this time that was last September. Oh, this is so the anniversary. Cool. It is kind of cool, yeah. And then, um, then we were like, well, what? I only I only did it for seven nights, seven days, because we needed the rest of the money to film it. And we wanted to film it to make sure. What if, what if I could never raise that kind of money again to do it again? Yes. So we got it on film. So where it stands now, a year later, is um, it's been really hard getting it to a, it's been, it's not hard, it's just a real challenge because there's just as many gatekeepers as there always is. And it's very interestingly difficult for some crazy reason to get people interested in the subject, even though they're so interested in the subject, but not interested in the real life of it, I guess. I don't know, maybe they are, maybe they're not been a difficult push but back to your question because I do dally off don't I um, <laughs> the question was uh, coming out and you hear that so when the play was ready to go we, had, we were faced with this dilemma who's Safi Haven and who's Isadora Oboto and we had this problem with the the play the playbill itself 
Yes. How do we yes. how do we say this and not confuse people? Because as a writer, I write under Seth and David, and I can't change that because once Amazon has that, as far as I know, if I were to come out with similar material, I would probably, as Isadora, be accused of plagiarizing and be taken off their site. Yes. So yes. I have to stick with Seth and David. <laughs> and when I did do the show, I did not tell family members and friends uh, that were that don't know that about me, that don't know I'm two names. However, they're, they're, they are big sleuths, and they did find out, and my, some, some of my family did come. I still keep myself a secret from people in my life that would be somehow hurt that I took up that profession of an escort, and um, I don't want to hurt anybody with it. So there's no reason to shove it in their face. Yeah. <laughs> but once I came out and, and was said, okay, Seth Haven is my pet name, Isadora Oboto is my name name, um, there was a sense of freedom to that. It was a sense of, okay, it just is what it is. And the people who are going to walk, yeah, exactly. Like you always describe, you know, you always talk about this big exhale. And um, yes. it, it was that sort of exhale. So... Oh, I love that. It's it's, and I always loved your story. Um, that's why we you were always on the show. But we were. The, what I'm saying is, first of all, congratulations. I love it that. Um, of course, there's no coincidence that you're here um, one year exactly after you <laughs> you did the show, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, what I what I also love about this is how when you're in the, the flow of life and when you're in the flow of things, things just come into being, like the synchronicities and everything, how everything just flowed to make this happen. Uh, this is, that is the most beautiful thing, you know, like you can just, if you close your eyes, you can see how the tapestry just came together. <laughs> And that was amazing. Um, how did you feel when you were on stage? Were you, because I mean, now you really, really were out there, and um, you were like, okay, I, I've been to saying that I'm Sefi Haven and I'm Isadora Balto. This is my pen name. This is who I am. But what did it feel like when you were on stage and actually being Sefi Haven, or well, whoever you were yeah, in that I, role as the escort? Yeah, it was actually being, um, you know, who I was as an escort, the story I wrote um, on stage and telling the story for the first time. I had told some of it in, in the books, but not all. And the play spans much longer, uh, much more of a, a lifespan than the, than the books. Mm. So it was really the whole story, and it felt really... Um, like a relief to be able to tell the true story of mm. what actually happened um, and the craziness of the true story of what happened. And it got great um, response from the audience that we had. It wasn't huge audiences every day, but we rented a very big theater. Um, so we couldn't fill it yet and didn't have money left over for PR. We just had enough, you know, but it was a lot. So, but it felt really special. So when I finally got on stage, I hadn't acted on stage in over a decade. Um, so I was scared because we didn't have enough rehearsal time. And to do 90 minutes by yourself on stage without much rehearsal time made it scary because I wanted it to be inside me so I could just let go and fly, you know. Yes, but yes, it, yes. It wasn't quite that far. However, on the day before opening, which is, you know, full tech, so you, you do everything as if there was an audience uh, for the first time. So that all the, the lighting people and everyone else can make sure everything's good on their end. So I was standing backstage in costume, waiting to go on. And it was the first time I saw everything start to work. You know, the lights mm -hmm. go out and the music they had picked. Um, and as I'm standing there and the lights went to half, the music they picked came on, which was Audrey Hepburn's Moon River, and um, that was a song I listened to every time before my clients came. So I'd be waiting for them in my apartment. Um, and so I'm looking out at the stage at this replica of what is kind of representative of my life as an escort. 
and watching the, the lights go down and hearing Moon River and thinking, and hearing in my ears too, the lighting people and the, the stage manager and so forth saying lines of mine, you know, that I used to say when I worked and yet became part of the play. And I had this almost a spiritual feeling of like I didn't exist in the time that I was standing there, but I was back in time. And it was as if I thought, oh my God, everything that I did then, everything I wrote down and imagined at that time, which was that I was paying close attention to what I was living and writing it into the future. Now I'm in the future going, oh my God, all that is here now with me. Everything that happened then is here now. And I don't know, there was just such a moment of faith of knowing how much faith my younger self had and my older self doing this for her, mm -hmm. or for us. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say more like a split personality, mm -hmm. but, um, <laughs> well, I am, wow. Yeah. Who's speaking? I don't know. <laughs> so, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so my She's younger, different. But I know, my younger self was like, somehow knew that my older self would, would make something of it. So put a lot of effort into paying close, close, close attention and thinking that this journey was going to be worth more than prostitution. You know, yes. going yes. to be an, an important story that I get would get to tell when I got older. I don't think my younger self anticipated me being this old. But I get it done quicker. But um <laughs> so. Wow, um, I love that, and, and I love that you, you actually, because uh, first of all, I'd like to say that, I mean, I was honored to see, see the movie, and it's like brilliant, so um, hopefully we can, we can put a link, I know there's a, a, a paid version of it, but I'll put a link in the description box, it's something that you have to watch, because it's so heartfelt, it's so real, and, and you know what, we can, we can judge as much as we want because of fear, because that's what we do, right? That's, that's what judgment is. But to be able to, to live that and to, to see how you can change circumstances into your, in your life um, and turn them into blessings. So that's one of the most beautiful things that I got out of that, um, and I've always got out of your story, is how you were in the situation, you had, well, you know, no choice, you know. This was the life you had at that moment, but you turned it around to, to be a blessing for everyone involved. And I'm not saying more than that because um, I'm talking now to the audience. You, you have to go and watch this to understand where I'm coming from, and then you will understand what I mean. So just that as a side note. Back to you again. Um, so this was this was an amazing thing because it was almost like you've come full circle. Your 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 younger self and your older self have have merged somehow and have become a, a really different person because she's different, you different, but now you're totally different. So yeah. so what what how did things change after the the play? And, and you came back um, to, to LA, I mean, to San Diego. Oh, and there's, there's one more thing I just want to, to just, uh, as I'm talking, I'm thinking about, there's a reason you did it in Chicago, right? Yeah, there, <laughs> I don't know if it's nice to say, but, well, I'm from Chicago originally. Yes. And, uh, my director, Jim, is from Chicago originally, and several of the other people uh, were from Chicago, so it, they were in LA, but they were from Chicago. So there was a, a little Chicago. We all came from Chicago theater, and Chicago theater is amazing because people go, which is one thing. In LA, they're like, oh, the theater. Oh. Yeah, they drive on the 101 to the five, you know, <laughs> which I don't blame because I don't want to drive on the 101 to the five. <laughs> um, so there was that, and um, but also when I went to do the play, I wanted to do it in LA because that's where I live, uh, or San Diego, you know, and so I, I called friends of mine who knew friends who did, you know, lighting and sound and camera and this and that and the other thing all in LA, and so I would call, first of all, the reception was not warm, you know, they would take forever to get back to me as if they were doing me a favor, it was a paid position, they were going to be paid, and thousands, not just, you know, would you do it for a hundred bucks, you know, <laughs> money, um, so, and, and a lot of them, when they finally did call me back, they were so, like, 
Well, I mean, okay, I'll read this some of the, I'll read the script, but I mean, here's the thing. Like, I'm not working right now, but like if Spielberg calls, I'm gonna go have to do that, no matter if you think or not. And I'm like, okay, oh, well. so if Spielberg calls you, then you just run. But I'm thinking to myself, I can't, I just can't, because to me, it took me a whole lifetime to do this. And for me, yes. it was a very special story, and it was taking my whole life to put it up and every, all my energy to raise the money for it. And I just couldn't have somebody be like, well, you know, I just don't want to like prioritize that. <laughs> so we decided Chicago <clears throat> because people actually want to work in the theater there and they, you know, they want to do their jobs that they're hired to do. So we decided that. And that's why we decided that. There was good things about that. And like anything you think you've done it perfectly, you've given, it's a vacuum type thing. Everybody's been paid and everything. You know, you, there's nothing that could be go wrong. And then the universe goes, you know, you want to see what you didn't think of. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, I really don't. Don't, don't teach me a lesson like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now you've, now you've, um, now my curiosity's peaked. What went wrong? I'm not going to say too much, but I. I hired somebody that I really wanted to hire because I knew her for a very long time, but I hadn't seen her a long time. And, um, you know, it turned out that maybe she was, I'm not really sure what happened with her, but I think maybe she went through a, a, a mental health challenge and um, kind of imploded, and I don't know what happened for her. I, I feel... We felt really devastated. Uh, in the moment, it was terrifying because she was sort of coming back and attacking the show. Uh, oh. it, and I was like, I don't know why this has happened. But um, so all, of we, I could, all we could kind of think is maybe there's something um, unbalanced happening. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say that against anybody. But anyway, so that threatened the production pretty deeply, and we lost money and time and we had a lot of fear and we didn't know if we were going to have security guards and it was just kind of crazy and uh, then somebody else had to jump in and we had to get more money to pay that person um so it was it was a challenge and then once we got into the theater there was some young um, women running the theater who are lovely women um their job was just to sort of run the front of the theater and the thing the, the owner of the theater was absolutely in florida you know, one of those people who just own something. Um, yes, yes, yes. You know, not really much care about it. And um, it could have been a beautiful experience for everyone. My director got angry with him for a very valid reason, but he also got over angry. You know, like he, he yelled at them, and you know, they're young and they're girls, and they got freaked out. And then they told us that we're, we're going to be locked out at the theater because of that. Oh, wow. So then we had to sort of go, we're sorry. Hey, you know, please don't walk us out of the theater. The fact that we got through this the whole thing and got through filming and we weren't kicked out of the theater, we got the stuff out. So it was just a miracle, but it shouldn't have been because everything was paid and no, and people should have been like, let's, like the theater should have been like, let's help make this the best we can. And, you know, it was, there was drama where there didn't need to be drama. Drama should have been on the stage. Yes, 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 yes. The best part is that um, you pulled it off and it yes. was a huge success. So um, congratulations again for that, you know. You didn't fall apart and go, oh no, woe is me, I can't do this. Let's just cut it and break it and not do it. So kudos to everyone for that. So, you, you, <laughs> see, you, you obviously had um, a good team and you were all you know, good, and you all wanted the same things, and that's yeah, the beautiful was, on its own. I was so lucky, the team that we actually had and hired and did the show were amazing. They were so talented, the lighting, the sound, the projection, the, um, my stage manager, slash producer, slash, you know, everything it was often, often, and she's multi, multi talented as an actor as well. I mean, she came from Yale, but she, and it jumped in and did everything. Um, and the, the director, Jim, and everybody was just, I was so lucky for them. They are brilliant. I wish I could keep them and we could do the show. We could all go together and like, little ducks, we're going here, we're going here. We can't, so. 
who knows, you know, things change all the time and uh, life is a way of changing things and just giving you breadcrumbs where hey, it be can become a huge cake. Who knows? <laughs> Give me the cake, the wedding cake, the big cake, not wedding wedding. Yes, 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 that big three-layered, ostentatious, I want that. Outrageous, yes, that sounds great, yes. <laughs> so, yes, I love that. And, and, and again, what I heard is that the freedom you found, and like I said, I can see a total different energy without, from when we first spoke, yeah. those very first shows to now where and you can see that like ah oh, that freedom you know that you that you found which is amazing on its own right it is and you know you i know this is, this is your you know it's what you do and teach and speak of you know and it really is when you do touch on it when it happens there is that big like okay nothing has changed on the outside all the threats are still there um in fact they're they're in force you know and the, the, the things you get hit with are the things that i've always been afraid to get hit with and they still exist yes, the difference yes. is uh i've stepped into it and said okay this is i don't have to lie about it so so it's not uh which increases the fear Yes, you know, and yes. the thing. But now I can also see, now that I've said what I say, and most people, not everybody, but most people know, when something happens that, like for instance, prior, I used to think if somebody didn't call me back, I would worry, I think they know, is it about that? You know, or is it yes. just they don't like me? You know, <laughs> like um, now they know, and they still don't call me back, and I'm like, well, maybe they're really bad at calling people back. I don't know, you know, because I'm here and I've always been here. So I don't know, maybe they're just terrible at that. Oh, maybe they don't like me, you know, who knows? But um, they don't take it, strangely enough, I don't take it quite as personally. Because I'm not yes. thinking, do they, don't they? Do they know? Is that why? Mm -hmm. Wow, that is freedom on its own because it's just... A Freeze your mind from that. Ah, oh, like, is it me? What have I done? Uh, I mean, whatever I have, do they know? And and it, it, it's constant hiding. And and how do you keep up with the lies and the and the deceit? I mean, I'm, I'm making it. I'm exaggerating it now, right? But if you think about it, the lies and the deceit and the like. Oh, this is me, but this isn't me. And do you know? Don't you know? So even that on its own must be the greatest freedom of all. You know, like. Oh, now it's just truth, and that's it. And it and frees it. so much space as well. Yeah, now you can, well, I'm saying you, but now I can go on and my mind can be like, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm writing another book or I'm writing a TV show, I'm writing whatever. It can be about, just write it and don't worry about how you couch it, you know? Yes, yes, um, yes, yes. Kind of so. Uh, that's beautiful. And now you don't have to take things personally, right? Because you are well, you I, and... I, I still do, Karina, because <laughs> like I, I went to a San Diego writers and editors um, function the other day because I'm here and I want to meet other... I really want to meet other authors and have a community. You know, when I was in LA, I had a community of actors and comedians and writers and it was great. Um, yes, yes. But down here, I don't have that. I went to one of these... And I got to sit with like wonderful people. And there was one man, he's kind of a famous writer who I admire him and I admire his business sense. And he just does so many great things with his work. So I was so mm -hmm. honored there. And his beautiful wife uh, was there. And she and I started talking. We had this great conversation and we shared pictures of our doggies, which looked similar. And um, I had said, you know, maybe when, and she had started a story about their love story and I wanted to hear the rest of it. And by accident, they drove me home because my Uber didn't show up. So long story short, I was like, this is wonderful. This is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. And, and I love him and I love her and I can't wait to walk our dogs together. So I texted her with the number she gave me and I wrote her on the email and I got no answer. And then I thought, well, they're probably busy. So I went to his website and then they went to, you know, and then I wrote him again. So it's been a week and a half. <laughs> and I have heard nothing. 
And I assume it's because they went home and looked me up. And as nice as I was in person and as much as we enjoyed each other in person, they're like, oh, yeah, she did escorting in the past, so we don't want to know that. I don't know if they're deeply religious, which could be. I don't know if they just don't want to look any further, even though they're both artists and writers, which is sort of odd that they wouldn't be more curious than judgmental. Or they could just be like, I'll write her when I feel like it. <laughs> and it's not anything to do with that, but who knows? But I don't know. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, I've noticed as well uh, that with, with people, a lot of times you send texts and emails and it takes maybe a one or two weeks before they get back because they're busy or they miss it. Or, so, you know what, it is what it is and um, that I'll, you know, it's probably the best to say, well, this is who I am. I, this is who I am and everything works out perfectly. There's no coincidence anyway, um, Isadora. <coughs> Oh, yeah, really, true. is there? Uh, so, like that your, your Uber didn't show up, right? And I then take, they could have said, oh, well, tough, you know what, we have to go home, but they took you home, and so who knows, you know, maybe in a month or two, who knows? I don't know, but that's the point of the story, I guess, is that I, even though I'm, quote, unquote, forth fourth right now, and then my website, has everything on it. So if you went to my website, you can look at the, the film and you can see a clip from it and you could, and everything's there. So if anyone knows my regular name, is Adora Obos, when they looked it up, they'd be like, oh, it's all there. So she could have easily done that. And yes. so it's not for me, not for me, or, so I don't know still, but a part of me, in line with what we're talking about, a part of me doesn't care anymore. I'm like, good, well, good. <laughs> wow. I guess this is, who I am, and I, I, I'm not lying to you. So this is what it is, and either you will appreciate the subject and want to be bold and brave enough to actually read about it, or think about it, or laugh with me about it, or, or you won't. And if you don't want to, then that's not for you. You know, there's yes. plenty of stuff that I don't want to talk about that hurt me too much. You know, like animals. I would love to be an animal rescuer. I don't think I could live through it. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. sadness that these mm -hmm. animals go through, but I could. Yeah, on the outside of it, but when people write books about it or even articles, I'm like, I can't. I'll be in bed, you know, with yes, images yes. in my head. So yes. I understand, I mean, if, if this might be one of those subjects to some people, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. But the thing is, it's beautiful that you've come far. So look how far you've really come, you know? Like, it's, it's okay. This is me. If you like it, this is me. If you don't like it, this is still me. There's nothing I can do about it. So that is beautiful on its own. So congratulations for that. That well, is growth. Is that right? Uh, thank you. I mean, I, I think the same of, like, I'm going to bring up your book because, you know, you went through something quite harrowing uh, that most people never would even know existed beneath the surface of our country. You know, I mean, I read your book and was in... I was, I cried, I was in shock, and I was angry at everything that you went through. And, you know, you can't change that. And however no. people uh, have either empathy or sympathy for you, or they think, oh, you know, what's she doing in this country? <laughs> you know, um, that's what they're going to feel. And right, you can't change it. It's part of what made you you. It's part of why you're standing here today doing, you know, break fear, find freedom, you know? Mm -hmm. yes, so yes. you guys are going to appreciate that and go, she's amazing. She's amazing. Look what she went through and came out of. You know, or they're going to be like, oh, no, I don't know her from. You know, <laughs> which I think is because, you know, it makes you hard. It makes you crusty. It makes you not very attractive inside and out in terms of how you receive and give in life. To yes, me. Yes, you know? yes, yes. So I don't want to do that. Yes. I, I agree with you. And <laughs> yes, yes, that's exactly. So thank you for that. Um, but that's ex what, what I, like I say all the time. We have. I have to be the change. So what I, I, whatever other people say or do has got nothing to do with me because I can't change it. The only, right. It's the way I react towards it. So if people. Um, come towards me and say, wow, that's great, and thank you, or whatever, that's cool. And if they go, they reject me, well, they reject me, you know. I can't do anything about that. And, I'm, and 
And I think um, probably like you've seen, I can't, if I, if I think about all the people that reject me or all the people that haven't replied to my texts or my emails or whatever, I wouldn't be here talking, you know, I wouldn't be here yeah. having this conversation. I'd be hiding in the corner. And then, like, what does that make me? Because, like, I'm, I'm not breaking fear at all. I'm actually becoming fear. So... Well, yeah, that, that is quite a balance, though, you know, that we always hold fear. I always, I don't just yes. say I always have a great deal of fear. And I have of my flaws, the things that make me a flawed person, are always just there, ready to just spill out everywhere. However, it's making the, being conscious of them, to me, this is my own thing, but trying to be conscious of when I'm, be, like you said, being fear. Um, or when I'm being um, just the trueness of what I who I am, you know, that's not uh, that. So it's a back and forth all the time right now for me. For always, I think. For, for me. I don't know if I've ever been one of those people who just easily girls. <laughs> 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 but that's what that's what makes you is adora and that's what makes you beautiful because like, we're not perfect no one's perfect come on and and if we pretend to be perfect well you know what that's another thing that we have to deal with and um then you have that that fear of now we're going back to the fear of being found out i mean for me uh no, that's too much hard work it's not worth it. It's better just to say, hey, this is me, uh, on, or online, offline, wherever, this is me. And like it or hate it, uh, this is me. Yeah. So, so, yes, yes. Um, it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Uh, um, I just love it. I love, I just love the story. And of course, um, we'll have the link to the website. Your website's beautiful. Your photographs are Thank amazing. You. You, they're really beautiful. So kudos to your photographer. Yeah, it was, uh, the photographer was a really uh, great photographer in LA named Kim Newmoney. How, bad, how cool is that? <laughs> Newmoney. I love it. Um, and she's, she's so creative and so enthusiastic, and um, she's also a skater, you know, a, a roller skater. She's like, yeah, man. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> so <laughs> cool. Yeah. I'm going to give her um, a wonderful makeup first, Rachel. And uh, my, it was, so when, when I came back, I didn't know how, I was, I kept thinking, we have this great thing. And what I would like to do with the show is like, offer it in a package to like producers who do full seasons of theater and have like a little spot like two weeks here or three weeks there that I could fill and if they produced it for a much less you know production value than we did in Chicago but it can be done on a much more scale I thought that's a way to like bring the show out so I wrote yes. to some theaters and got very few responses some were like yes we'll read it thanks bye you know, um, but, the, <laughs> but there was kind of this frustration in it, you know, just like, what do I, how do I bring this to life? And then there was the thought of taking the film of it and, and opening it in an art house or a small theater in LA and having like a three week run there, you know, there's just all this, like, what do I do? What do I do? And it just, uh, I think you just made a point now I'm just drawing away from it, but there was about... Um, just this frustration of being completely stopped at every turn still. Um, so I don't know. Right now, it, I've been told so many things that I'm trying to do all of them. Yes. Um, which is, um, someone said, well, you know, you need to do it on stage in New York and L.A. and at Edinburgh. And I'm like, okay, that'll take all of next year, and I need to raise about $80,000 to do it. And I'm like, okay, so then what do I do? Spend the rest of the year raising money again? And I, I just don't know that I have it in me. And it makes me sad that some of the arts can't exist. Some artists can't speak enough because it's just not money there. And some can because they're lucky. You know, they were born with money or have money or whatever. So those are the louder or the more opportune moments. Um, so I don't know. And then I was told, well, you just need to write it into a teleplay. Oh, like a TV limited series. So, mm -hmm. I'm like, well, okay. But if I start, if I do that, I'm not a television writer. So if I do that, will they will it in front? Of, I need a manager to take it in front of um, you know, and I don't have that. So I've 
apply to managers and agents who say, well, I can't help you until you write another book. So, <laughs> okay, so I have to write a book, a teleplay, uh, you know, uh, do the show three more times. Um, and then the last one was, okay, you need to write an article that gets published in like Vanity Fair or Harper's Bazaar or The Cut or something. I'm like, yeah, because that's easy. That's just you can do yes, it. Yes, yes. You can do it in a second and I'll just accept everything. Yeah, I just, you know, like, had, why hadn't I thought of that? <laughs> you know? So I have this list that was growing of all these advice. And all this is really good advice. And these are people that took the time to talk to me and to give their advice. And it was all good advice. It's just that it's a lot. And it also was frustrating. I thought, well, I already wrote two books and a full-length play and performed it, and it's on film. And they're like, yeah, I don't, I'm not gonna, no. The books are already out. The film is, you know, an hour and a half. I'm not gonna watch that. You know, <laughs> okay. So I'm at a place where I have to like um, keep believing, I guess, and do all these projects. So that's what I've been doing. I'm writing a TV show of it. Two, actually. One on the show itself, and one that takes place in the fictional world afterwards, and it's just escorts in their later years, and how funny that is, sort of like the Golden Girls and escorts, you know? <laughs> oh, that, sounds, that sounds very funny. <laughs> I hope that's funny. And then I'm writing the book, and then I'm just, I don't know, so, and I don't know if I'm going to do a show in New York or L.A. or let's do the film, or, I don't know, you know, and, and so part of me is trying to stay grounded and not give in to the, the sadness and the fear that um, that all this work oh, is for nothing and that this, it'll all just, you know, the play itself will just go back to bed and that'll be the end of it, you know? Because if you don't keep pushing that rock like Sisyphus um, until somebody grabs your hand and goes, here, I'll help you, come with me. You know, that's, I guess, what you're waiting for. But... Mm. So it sounds like you're doing so many things and like, juggling so many balls. So that's, yeah. <laughs> that's my life, juggling balls. <laughs> <laughs> so with all these balls in the air, do you ever have time for fun? <laughs> well, I actually, I know it's not so important. This is actually, for me, writing and performing and talking to other artists and being in writing groups. I love that. And I love reading other people's work or watching other people's stuff. So it's just joyful for me. Plus, I have a cute little doggy who I love madly. And he's great. Um, and I realized <clears throat> that I, I'm quite boring that way. Cause, cause I have a friend who's a matchmaker. And I talked to her recently. And I said, you know, I haven't dated in like 20 years. Um, and you know, and she said, "Well, you could fill out this form." And I was like, "Okay." So I filled out the form, and part of one of the questions was, um, "What are your hobbies? What do you do for fun?" And I'm like, "I am the most boring person in the world," because most of the fun I have is like artistic, creative, and it has nothing to do with but not playing pickleball like you were talking about here, as dad, you know. I don't know. Yes, well, that's uh, my stepping out of my comfort zone because I understand exactly what you you mean. Like for me, this is fun. Like, oh, having these conversations and yeah. speaking to different people and writing and creating—that's my fun. So, um, pickleball we're the is same. we're like very similar that way. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, and that's writing awkward. books and it's it's so amazing. So, pickleball for me is really, really stepping out of my comfort zone because I'm I'm quite a loner, you know, because this is quite a it's it's my own in my head and just writing and doing stuff. Yeah. So, yes. I get yes. that so much. You know, that's. I had a friend in LA who wrote a book and it was published by a publisher, and she said the publisher was putting me on the road to do, um, you know, book launch. Book signings. Nice. Yes. Nice. And she wrote me and she said, well, you're in San Diego. Can you get together like your San Diego friends, your writer friends and, and everybody else and like meet at some cute Mexican restaurant and I can do, read some, on my book. And I was so embarrassed. It took me like two years to write back because I was like, and I finally had to just say, I said, I don't have any friends here. I have friends on Zoom. <laughs> I have lots of friends and they're all, all of them. I have no one in San Diego, not, no friends here. And I have no writer friends here. 
and I'm mortified at my own life right now. That's just, <laughs> I can't believe myself. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I haven't dated in 20 years. You yeah, haven't, like, oh my God, I sound like such a loser, but. No, you don't. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little bit of a loser. <laughs> no, first of all, take that back. Like, that's. That's not cool. That's not cool. Okay. I'm going to luck. That's not cool because you're no, far I'm, from I'm, a loser. I'm okay. Sorry. I don't want to. I know. Be. I'm not in a place. I don't want to. It's not even a thing, first of all. And, you know, I have a lot of friends and I spend a lot of time with people, but it's mostly on FaceTime and Zoom because everybody lives far. So that's not terrible. It's just sort of hit me that if I had to get picked up like from a colonoscopy and can't drive, you know, I have nobody. Well, actually, I have my my gym. Yeah. But and he always gets but like it's just small. You know, your life when you're a writer, like you said, you know, you're in your head and you're doing your thing and until I had stepped out with the show I hadn't had all this before. So Yes, it's amazing. Um, and, I, and, I, and I'm right there with you because I, that's exactly, that's how my life is as well. Like I said, pickleball has just sort of taken, so now I know like a bit more people that I play pickleball with. But otherwise I am, I'm like, yeah, you know, and it's cool. I'm okay with that. That's the sad part. Or maybe it's not, I don't know. So it's like, I'm okay with this. <laughs> yeah, I mean... <laughs> Well, I mean, pickleball, <clears throat> from what I know of it, which I don't play, but I have friends who do, and they absolutely love it, especially for the social aspect of it, you know? Also, I hear they're not making cute outfits, so that's nice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I haven't got there yet. <laughs> but <laughs> what's what's great with it is that it's, it's big, it's a lot, you know? It's like no one takes it seriously, really. Well, it's just a fun, it's community, and you laugh, and you play, and you miss the ball, and who cares, you know? Right. So um, that's that's the, 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 the fun part. But we'll see. We'll see how it, how it pans out or what happens from oh. now until... Right. That's I love cool. reading the article you wrote about it. it was very oh, sweet. thank you, <laughs> thank you. So yeah. yes, so that's just a change of a bit of scenery. So what, like, I know you you like juggling all these balls, and what's next, really? Like, are you going to just carry on juggling all these balls until you can <laughs> do what you want to do, or what? Well, well, I am doing what I want to do. I just, I just feel like a responsibility to this story, the, the play of it, because it took a lifetime to do it, and it's a beautiful piece. And I think, I think it's, I think it's really a beautiful story that's done well. And I would like it for it to have a life. It's sort of like having a child and not giving it opportunity. So I feel a responsibility to this child, you know, to give it a chance. And so I said to myself, I'm going to do everything I can in the next year or two um, just to see if I can't give this story a chance to breathe. And if everybody rejects it, you know, if I tried every avenue and done everything I possibly can, um, then I will let it sit and move on to something else. But I can't imagine my life without, I mean, I have to do this creatively. I can't, there's nothing yes, yes. that I can do, it's just who I am. So I've always been doing this if I'm little. So, so it will continue, but <clears throat> what project? I don't know. I'm thinking maybe that one of the older escorts might be hilariously fun. And I also want to make, you know how the Facebook, you can make those little 20 second clips of characters that you play. Um, so I kind of want to do that, but I don't know how. I'm trying to figure out the how of that. Um, and then I really, really, really would love something to do. Uh, animal advocacy and education. I mean, it's uh, very hard for me to rescue up the place to take my land for me right now. But also, I think it would be, I think part of the problem for animals is a lot of people would treat animals better if they were educated about this, you know, how to. Um, I know along the way I've learned a lot of things that I never did right. It was like hurt animals, not meaning to, but you know, just. And I, I hate that about it. It's like the one thing I would change in my life is the times that I didn't know how to care for an animal and therefore it did not do it well, you know? But then learned along the way, oh, I would do this better, I would get better. And I think if I wish somebody had educated me mm -hmm. um, so much. So I think for me, I'd love to do a project, creative project on um, 
I'm learning about animals, you know, in a fun, you know, like the spider in your bathroom thinks it's your roommate. Don't kill it. You know, <laughs> it has furry paws. It's actually adorable. Not that I want it on me, but, you know, but just telling you. Yes, but, but yeah. I mean, you can, you can save it, you know, like I, I save spiders and you know, we, they come into your house because they're looking for food or whatever and just say them. It's nothing wrong. You know, you know, well, Take it that's a form of fear too. I mean, I think a lot of times people, not meaning to, most people are so conscious of animals, but some people are not. And um, I think there's a fear of <clears throat> looking beyond, you know, um, I think there's an anger even, like if you talk about something like, oh, shut up, it's right. you know, it's a preacher, it's a this, it's a that, you know. Yes, yes. But there's a big fear of, I had a huge fear of insects, you know, just, mm -hmm. and so my instinct is kill it, just kill it, you know, I don't want it on me, until you start looking at the pictures of them and what they do, and you know, it's not, it's, I still don't want them on me, I don't want them in my bed, I don't want to bite them, but you know, like a silverfish was living in my bathroom for a very long time, and when he was gone, I was like, oh, it felt like I'd lost a friend. I'm like, oh, no, you were having such a good time, you know? <laughs> or like opossums, you know? But because of the way they look, people think that they will bite them or they're fierce or they have rabies. They're absolutely the most gentle things. They'll actually protect you from things. And they just want, you know, a good can of tuna fish now and then. You know, it's like, give them a tour yes. of and they yes. 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 <laughs> but, I, but if you don't know, your the first instinct is kill it. Because that's what we think out of fear about people, too. You know, we don't understand them. We go, you know, that's a bad group of people. Get them out of here. They're, they're you know, um, well, so yeah, so it becomes even a political thing. But, uh, but on the baseline, you know, it is about fear, isn't it? Yes, yes. That's, so that's why we can educate, because a lot of people are afraid of spiders. And um, without, okay, they'll bite you to protect themselves, but you know what, it doesn't cost anything to get, take a piece of paper, put it on the paper, and put it outside. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and let it live, it has a right. But, but again, it's about fear. So if you can educate um, people, and it's, and also it's, it's it's about, and we go, people take it as a notch higher to, to um, people. Like, oh, that person's not good because of the color of his skin or because of the language he speaks or because he's from wherever, or whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Uh, so if we, can, if we can end that and just say, you know what, love is all there is. So let's just yeah, understand I mean, it. I, I think with my show, that's the... And, and education and, 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 and a very playful way I'm not going and go but I did have <clears throat> somebody say to me you know ever since I've known you and read your stuff we were talking yesterday and she said um you taught me you opened my perception of, of a world I didn't know and I have a totally different view of it now as a woman uh which I didn't have before and I, that made me feel <sighs> so good, like something I, that my piece, that everything I wrote led to um, an openness of mind and heart about women <clears throat> and who we are and, and details you don't know and you don't have to be afraid of. And especially now with this whole, uh, we're back to no, no body autonomy for women. We can't be, we can't have control of our bodies, which when I grew up, we did up to a point and then, except I didn't because as an escort, I could be arrested. So I still didn't have full body autonomy. I didn't have the freedom to make love with who I wanted to, for whatever I wanted to, whether it was for free or a gold earring or my rent or whatever it was. I didn't have body autonomy. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I still don't. So that's why coming out was, you know, punishing in many ways. People punished you. Corporations punished you. Um, but now all of women in the United States are being punished, unless you're in like California or New York. Yeah, kind of safety zone. Um, so uh, I think it's timely what I'm trying to say. Yes. I'm talking yes. about art and I'm talking about, uh, but, it, but it's not educational in that way. It's just an opening of the mind, I think, I hope. I don't know. Yes. So <laughs> yes. Well, well I, I have to go back um, because when I first, we first met and we first did that very first episode, 
Um, I found when I, um, when the episode ended, I felt that judgment rising. And of course, because we taught that, okay? And that's why we had the second episode. And you did, it is like a mind opening, but it's also almost like a forgiveness for us as women. You know, it's like, you have a right to live the, your life and you chose that life and who am I to judge you for that? But it's not only that, it just allows you to forgive to forgive women and to allow women to live their lives the way they want to. And I'm just talking women because this is, and, and, and men as well, because if men want to do whatever they do, it's, it's up to them. And, if, and, and, and again, if we can just stop and take a moment to step back and say, you haven't walked those shoes, you have no right to judge, and you're not perfect in your own way, so um, let's just stop the judgment and see it as an education and open our minds to possibilities. So I love that. And um, well, you, you helped me do that too. Sorry, sorry. Well, um, I, no, no, I have a on. question about that though. Um, so when you and I first talked and you said you felt the judgment rising in you. Yes, yes, what, I'm with you. Uh, what, what, what was the judgment? What was the words that were in your head? What was the what was the voice that was talking to you? Well, it's um, it is about it's about um, you know being brought up in a certain way. You know, you, you it's it's about society telling you certain things, and a lot of times the the, the, the words in your head aren't yours anyway. They belong to someone else, and because. You don't. You just accept them, accept those as true, because you don't know any better. Okay. Let me so, let like, me explain. Like, what was one of the thoughts? Like, oh, well, like, this is wrong. But why did you think so? Like, because God says no. Because what was your reasonings in your head? I don't know. It's like. Okay, let me take it a step back. Let me, let me, uh, I, I had a conversation with someone recently. I think that might make sense. And I was saying, um, she was saying, oh, what are you doing on Friday or whatever? And I was saying, oh, you know what I'm having? I'm, I'm, I'm doing this um, podcast episode with um, my friend Isadora. And, and, and then I was telling her, oh, because she, you know, people follow, but they don't follow. And I was telling her about, oh, you know what? She was an escort or whatever. And she cut me short like in a moment and she said well that's that's not okay everyone has a choice in their lives and that's not god's will and she's going to go to hell and it was like whoa <laughs> like whoa what is this um, and and she's and, and she's this and she's that and you know like she could have she could have prevented it and like i took a step back and i thought whoa that is harsh and that is scary, and um, that's not called for, okay? And perhaps those were ideas that I had, okay, previously. Perhaps those were ideas. But I'm not really so, um, like, I'm, I'm more spiritual, um, rather more open, rather than God being, like, this um, judgmental man or whatever. Um, but I could look at it from, because we had spoken and because I, you know, like we've had this, I could look at it and go like, no, that's not right and that's not fair, okay? You don't know and you don't know the full story and you don't know her. So I think that's also what we need to, to look at and like say, it's very easy to point fingers at someone. It's very easy to say that you are a bad person. Sorry, I'm pointing fingers, okay? You are a bad person and God's going to punish you and you go and you and like you're a bad person but that other person's a good person and they're going to go to heaven or like what who are you to say those things you don't know and you don't know the full story so how who are you to judge okay so that's why like i said um, if we go back i'm going to link those two episodes in the comments in the description box because if you go back that's why I, 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 we, we had that second conversation when I said you know what I was feeling this judgment this is not cool this is not who I want to be so we had that um, second conversation and you can understand because it gives 
I think it gives you a freedom to know, like, as a woman, you have rights and you can decide what you, how you want to live your life on your terms. You don't have to depend on anyone else. You can live your life on your terms, doing what you want. It doesn't matter what anyone else says or does. Did that answer your question? Yeah. <laughs> it was so no, convoluted. No, it really does. And uh, it's interesting about the, uh, the religious thing, because I know that, um, you know, the people who feel that way, they feel that the Bible, that the, whichever Bible they're reading and whichever part, portions of the Bible that they're adhering to, um, that is actually to them the word of, of God. And they believe that. And so, and that's okay, you know, everybody yes, has yes, to of believe what we believe, you know. Um, but for them, it's, it's very, uh, there's no way around that. You know, and and that's what it is to them. So, but interestingly enough, I'm in America. So here in America, it's illegal to do that. But if I went to England or Holland or anywhere in Europe, um, it's not. And so, I don't know if the same people would be like, "Well, you're going to hell," because it's actually not as frowned upon. Um, in fact, there's places where that it's part of the culture. You know, um, mm -hmm. so in Asia and things like that, there's a there's a part of the culture that is like okay, you know. Um, in France, men have mistresses, and the wives are like, "Good, go go, go to the mistress." We don't feel like you do. <laughs> Not everyone in France, obviously, but it's a more accepted thing. So we don't think of it as, "Oh, she's going to go to hell." They think, "Yeah, okay. you know, I can go." <laughs> I don't know, whatever they think. Um, so I don't know if those same people, that same um, friend of yours, if she and I were in France together, if she would say, well, yes, you're still going to hell. Like, <laughs> all the women in yeah. Um So it, it's, there's no, the only thing I can hope for in terms of the mindset is just I'm trying to bring it more into the mainstream so that like you had that sort of mini epiphany with me, you know, saying, oh, actually, it's not anything that's hurting me, personally, Karina, and it's not anything that's hurting anybody else. And actually, I kind of like her. Um, and actually, now that I've read her work or, or read her books, I, I get it. And it's, I'm really um, So I don't know if we'll ever reach that stage. I know that there are people that are just too afraid to even read my book, which is a basically a comedy. I mean, I wrote it with a humorous voice and um, so that it was easy to slide into, you know? Yes, yes. I don't know, you know, there's some things that just aren't heard in the light, in certain lifetimes. That's just what it is, you know? I know, but you also have to consider that people hear things when they're ready to hear things and they'll see things when they're ready to see things. And um, if they don't, well, they'll see it later and understand it later. And maybe, or maybe at the yeah, and at the end, maybe it's about accepting yourself and accepting who you are, and maybe that's all that is. Maybe that's what it's about. I I, I, I I don't know. I don't know either. I I I know that sometimes I feel like well, maybe this lifetime that I'm living in, in this particular time, this particular culture, this particular paradigm of thought, is just not ready to hear these kind of stories. They just don't want to. And if they do, they're like, yeah, okay, whatever. But they don't understand it um, on a deeper place as a, a woman or a man as to what that means to have, well, I don't want to put anything out there, but you know, so maybe that's what it's going to be. And then, then like you said, there's just a self-acceptance about, maybe that's what it is. Do I still want to create it? Yeah, I still want to create it. I still want to make it like this lovely journey that if somebody read it, maybe a hundred years from now, they go, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> you know, this was great. I'm glad you wrote it. Yes. Yes. But, but, and you always, and you always come out with something. It's just like these conversations. You come in one person and you go out another person anyway, because you learn, you learn along the way. And if we, if we stay open and we actually hear and listen to each other, that would also make a difference. And we'd realize how much beauty and um, substance can, and how your life can change for the better because of it. So um, I'm saying, 
Yeah. Out there, yes. I l watch the story, and I mean, I'm not telling you what to do, but listen and um, see things with an open mind and a different perspective, and allow your life to be richer for that. Uh, yeah, it's sort of be, stay curious, my friend. Stay curious instead of judgmental, if it's possible. You know? Yes, yes, um, yes. Wow, this is a beautiful place to end and thank you. Thank you, Zadora. I love this. I love this conversation. Me too. I love where it's it always, went. Okay. It's always yes. so good. Mm, yes, thank you. Likewise. And um, so I'm saying check out the past conversations we've had. See the difference and um, the, the the likeness and the, the like total change but it's also because you, you've 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 done this you've experienced this whole one woman plan even that makes such a big difference in your life right um, yeah. so experience that check out the website and um, check out this this uh, movie it's amazing it will be life-changing they won't be able to watch the movie but um but they can read the book and also if I see a clip See yeah, a clip of them. Yeah. If maybe they'll know somebody who wants to, like, I love this. You should be doing this. You never know. <laughs> exactly. So let's put it out there. If, if there's anyone out, out there who thinks, well, this is something I want to do, let's, um, she, let's chat, right? Right? You never know. You <laughs> never know. Yeah. So, um, and there's, um, there's no coincidence. Only synchronicities. Nah. <laughs> so, yes, I love it. Thank you so much, Isadora. Um, it's been a pleasure, and um, we'll chat soon next time. Let's have a live face to face yeah. one just because we can on the yeah. beach. Why not? <laughs> okay. That sounds great. Yeah, let's plan it ahead of time, and then I'll plan the padding around. Yes, perfect. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for being here. And thank you, Zadora. We'll see you soon. <laughs> Bye. For